Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a sparkly mermaid card. I made this for my niece Maya, who is shown here on the top right, and I'm on the top left, and that's Dolly, her sister in the middle. And this is the painting I made for Maya for her 8th birthday. She asked me a year or two ago, uh, Auntie, could you make me a picture of a cheetah? And I said, okay, I'll make you a picture. She wanted me to just draw one, but I painted this for her. So let's just jump into how I made the card. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm kind of new to card making, so this process took me quite a while. Um, I had to uh, run these dies through my machine quite a few times because I put them in backwards or I put them in upside down and these things take a lot of planning. And my little helper here decided to make an appearance. That's my cat, Mama. She's about 17 years old now, and she's still as spry as a kitten. So she's gonna oversee the process here. I'm just feeding these um, dyes, the wave dyes, through my uh, Cricut. And Mama is obsessed with things going into, say, the Xbox or like, a disc going into the computer she she's mystified as to where did it go and she tries to swat at it so you can see her looking in there she's really smart and she wonders you know what's going in there and going out the other side it's pretty funny but um, there yeah, she just looked up so I uh, ended up running through these dies these are the um, uh, stitched uh, hillside dies Oh, are they by Lawn Fawn or Simon Says Stamp? I can't remember, but they're the stitched hillside dies, and I decided to get those. Um, you s would see those in a haul of mine that I just um, got, and uh, so I'm, I'm cutting the, the paper here to match my blue base, um, and uh, I can't remember the width of it, but I'm just turning it around so that the flat side goes to the top of the... Uh, the cutter and uh, you know instead of the wavy part so I could get a clean nice clean cut and for the waves that have both wavy on the top and the bottom I just put one of the other pieces over it and uh, used the line in my Fiskars cutter to chop the sides off so I have quite a few layers here as you can see um, I just eyeballed them. I didn't really plan it out with math or anything. And I'm using the Lawn Fawn uh, Mermaids, I um, can't remember what it's called, but the stamp, the Mermaid stamp. And I have these inks by um, Hero Arts. And I also got these sparkly pens I'm going to use uh, from Amazon. And they were super cheap. They were $5. So you'll get to see me use these. I'm going to do a review on them as well and point to this video to show uh, you know as an example where you could use them so I'm stamping out my cards here with memento ink and I'm just using my scrubber pad and uh, ranger that bubble gum cleaner to clean my stamps and I'm just stamping out a bunch of things because I have no plan for this I'm just um, stamping many things and I'm gonna color them all in and then uh, see what I want to use now keep in mind this card is for a child she's eight years old so it's gonna be kind of um, like I realize it's kind of over the top and a, like a bit tacky and stuff so I, I chose this tide pool color I stamped them all out to choose the colors that I liked for uh, seaweed here and I like pool and I like tide pool but I'm mainly gonna use tide pool for the colors so I, I'm I stamped everything out in black to color in, but I'm also stamping in these colors as well. I'm stamping on Express It cardstock, uh, so it's easy to um, blend with the Copic markers. And here I'm using Soft Cantaloupe, I believe it is. And I like the combination of the Tide Pool and the Soft Cantaloupe um, inks together. And I found that double stamping them uh, that's pale tomato there. It's a one darker and red royal for the little hearts and I found it best to double stamp the coral pieces and also the seaweed 
And I also tried a little technique, which you'll see. Um, oh, I wanted to mix some blue in there as well, so I'm using a different color. I think that's pool. And I'm, I'm turning the stamp a little bit and offsetting it just to see if I could get a cool effect, but I don't think I ended up using that because it wasn't that easy to cut out. So I'm just gonna stamp everything off here and come back when it comes to coloring time. So here I'm coloring in that cute little narwhal, he's so adorable, and I'm just using um, a bunch of uh, neutral grays here. I don't, I, I think that's all I have actually, are the N grays. Um, I don't have any cool or warm ones, It's, but they're the in a range from N0 to N2 to N4. And I'm also doing the same coloring in this rock. and. Um, You'll see me put in some uh, texture into these things too by using pointillism. This is uh, neutral six, just putting in some little dark areas, and this is neutral too. So I put the cap down for many uh, things so you can see the color, but not all of them. So I, I'm just introducing some warm browns to the rock just so that everything it looks a little more realistic and not uh, so... Um, cool of a tone and give it some separation from the narwhal color. I found it pretty frustrating when you don't have all the colors of um, markers that you want. Uh, like I found I ran into some problems with the mermaid's hair because I just didn't have all the colors that I want. So that can be challenging to try and make the colors that you have work. Uh, because I have quite a few Copics, I'd say about 60, but I still feel like, you know, I'm missing certain colors. I don't know. Anyway, so here I'm showing you some uh, pointillism just to introduce a little bit of texture into the narwhal. I just think it looks adorable. So I'm just coloring in the stars and everything else um, now and I'm adding some texture into those too. And I didn't get the dies for this set so um, you know it was kind of a pain in the butt to cut all these images out with my cutter bee scissors but I did it and uh, I figure that you know I'll only be using, or ma I'll mainly be using this set for, um, you know, a kid's card. And I, I think that once I make um, the whole mermaid seed once, I don't think I'm going to probably do it again. I might just use a few elements from this on other cards. So I figure, you know, for the time for Maya's birthday, I'll make this card full on for her and I'll make the full um, mermaid scene. So I tried stamping also in the colored ink and I didn't really like the way that turned out very well. Um, but here I go uh, coloring the mermaids and I'm coloring in um, most of their uh, suits or you know their tails and outfits in the same sort of bluish green color. And I gave them all different hair colors. I gave, uh, I did a redhead, um, brown hair, one blonde, and the little boy in sort of black with gray hair.
So here is where I ran into a little trouble. Like I'm trying to make a realistic hair color. I'm not used to making these cartoon figures. I'm used to making like uh, realistic paintings, <laughs> things like that. So it's funny, it's a challenge for me to go, um, you know, make things uh, sort of cartoony looking. And uh, here's my challenge. I did not have um, all the reds that I wanted, you know, and I have like a couple of reds, but in real red or auburn hair, it's very, it's, there's a lot of brown in there. Um, and it's tricky to make, uh, you know, a, a realistic looking redhead. But I think I sort of ended up making it work there um, after adding a couple of pinks in and going, whoa, being sort of shocked at like how bad it looked. <laughs> but I quickly fixed it. That's the thing about uh, Copic markers are if you don't like it, you can just make it darker and sort of um, fix it. And it's interesting because one thing that um, I, when I'm watching videos, I, I cringe at and I think, oh, you know, they just went over and darkened everything. They had all those light, nice light highlights. They left it out in a nice way and then they go over it and over it and ruin the highlight. And, and I'm like, oh, they made it too dark. And watching myself do this, it's so funny because that's exactly what I do and I'm watching it back now and cringing at myself doing it. Um, you know, I just keep going over it and over it. It's it's just interesting when you make videos like this to to really watch yourself overwork something or the potential is there to really overwork it very easily. Um, you know, uh, and that's one thing that I like about digital art. I've done some digital art in programs and you have an undo button and you can go back to, uh, you know, like 50 steps behind and say oh I want to go back to this point because I've just you know gone forward and I don't like the way it looks so you can just step back backwards but can't do that in real art uh, well you can in ways of course we can step back but sometimes there's no going back in fine art but anyway so here this is my little uh, brown haired girl and I as I'm watching myself I she's a little I would have liked her hair to stay a little lighter brown but it's okay um, and the same thing happens in the blonde I don't have the colors that I necessarily want I think I'm gonna have to go research you know um, the perfect blonde not the perfect Copic colors to get but I'm gonna have to start practicing some some hair because it's not not that it's not as easy as it looks, it's just a different medium than I'm used to um, than painting in a realistic way. It's kind of a more uh, stylized way. Um, and see, I don't like this color I'm using here and I just don't have the blonde uh, shades that I need. I, I have very limited yellow colors. I think that's the problem. Um, but anyway, I'll just let you guys watch me color for a little bit and come back when it's time to make the card.
right here I'm just adding some texture to the coral just because it gives a, um, a look of continuity to the whole piece when you use the same texture. Um, so I spared you the agony of watch me, watching me cut out all those little images with my cutter bee scissors. Yes, you're welcome. Um, and so I, I got those cutter bee scissors though for a great deal on Amazon. They were eight bucks, and that's and at Michael's they were eighteen dollars. So there's a little tip for you. And I do love those scissors. It was way more pleasant to cut out images with those. So I had a vision in my head. I wanted silver. I wanted silver fish sort of flashing through the waves, right? And I have this crappy. Um, embossing powder here and crappy embossing ink as you see that that's just like a cheapy version I got from Michaels one time and hey it works <laughs> I love the way the silver embossing powder works so uh, I like it so much that I'll be I'll get I'll get some better embossing powder I got some rose gold Simon Says Stamp um, powder which I love but I'm gonna I'm gonna get some better silver powder powder but this works um, so here I'm just stamping with the clear ink. I'm visualizing the waves just sort of uh, staggered and the little silver flashes sort of, you know, under the waves. That's what I'm going for here. And again, I'm going over the top with this card. Like, I wouldn't do this normally, but this is for a kid. So um, I wanted to give her lots of sparkle and lots of things to look at and really she's gonna keep this card forever so she'll know how much work I put into it you know um, so I'm just using my tape runner here to affix all the layers now and I'm just eyeballing it that's a tape runner I got from um, it's a Teresa Collins one and it was on recommendation by a woman at Michaels and I love it it's really good so I'm just fixing the waves here and taping them on and I I ended up going over to get all the excess sort of tape or glue on the sides off I went over with my special rubber cement picker-upper tool that I got in art school that I've had since art school. Um, we used to ha have to do projects and there could not be one speck of glue visible or touchable like or you would get a full lower mark. It was hardcore the design school I went to. Um, and I graduated with a A's and high honors and so I was like meticulous like I would not have a spare pencil mark or a little bit of glue nothing like that <laughs> um, so here I'm just laying out all my elements and this is the fun part right now you've got all your little elements and you can just place them in the waves a bunch of those schools of fish I kept out I had a feeling I would because I knew I was going to emboss them in the silver so I knew that I wasn't going to be pasting you know more fish on top of that so I left those out and I'm not that fond of the little white edge around the, the side of these things but I, I think it's appropriate for a kids card you know it's a cute uh, cute kind of look and then gluing on just the last elements, the very, very small ones. I'm using a little glue gun, not a glue gun, a glue pen thing there. So I'm using a pool color and just sort of uh, making it look like uh, stamping on the schools of fish uh, so they look like a watermark, kind of a darker blue. And I really like the way that looks. And now I'm just putting in, this is just, me designing I'm just sort of making it <laughs> you know putting more elements in there and again it's I know it's totally over the top with a lot of stuff in there it's very cluttered um, but again it's for a kid and all the kids l were obsessed with my card when she opened it and I because uh, a couple of the other kids at her birthday party gave her a homemade card and I made sure to make a big deal about it and encourage the kids to do that to make their own homemade cards 
And uh, so the, when I, I told the, the little artist that I made this card, they were ooing and aahing over it. Anyway, I guess you saw me put those pearls on there, okay? So uh, here I'm getting out my sparkly Sargent new gel pens that I just got on Amazon. And as I mentioned, these were $5 for all of them. That's Canadian too. They'd probably be, be even cheaper in the States. But these are really great value. So I recommend these. I'm going to do a review on them. Um, but look at all those colors. And so all I did was sparkle it up, baby. I just, uh, you know, embellished <laughs> where I wanted to. And um, you know, I even <laughs> see I'm coloring over the uh, the seaweed in blue, where the blue seaweed is, and then I take out the green pen and I'm coloring on the green seaweed. And there's my handy picker upper tool that I was talking about. I've had since art school, and so more sparkle, more sparkle over the seaweed. And I go into um, also, I'm mixing a little blue and the green there, and then I'm just embellishing their little, you know, fins and stuff like that. And then I pretty much use each of the colors, so I'll let you watch that. I embellish the crown, and I also embellish their hair. Uh, each in um, the different gel pe pen colors, so it's really great to have those. Yes, even the little seahorse gets some purple sparkle on him. So, card is almost finished. As you can tell, there's not much more I can do to it <laughs> except for spray glitz on it with like a fire hose of glitz, but I, I think I'll hold off on that. <laughs> oh, hold on, not finished. More sparkle. So, <laughs> There's a black sparkle pen, gel pen as well, so of course I had to go in and get his black sparkly hair. So that's pretty much finished. I did stamp a waving hello on the front, uh, which you don't see here, but here I'm just showing you. I stamped from this Simon Says Stamp um, Hugs and Kisses. I'm going to show you the inside here in a second. There's the finished card. See, I stamped waving hello, and then I stamped hugs and kisses, Maya, and then that's a little keep this card forever in your underwear drawer, and I just poured little hearts out of that heart uh, stamp there by Simon Says Stamp. And the kids really loved this card. They were ooing and aahing over it, as well as Maya's painting. They all loved it. So here's a little picture of that at her birthday party. I also have a video of me making, uh, of me painting her full painting, which I'm about to upload after this. So keep watching. Thank you so much for watching my video. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks. Bye.